this session, we're going to learn about the types of references in Microsoft Excel. If you go back to the previous sessions on learning Excel, we have been using what's called the relative references. If we were to look back here under the basic concepts, when we calculated these values and I entered the amounts, notice that the reference here is B6 through D6. But then when I used the autofill feature to get those formulas populated, notice that it went to B7 to D7. And then the next one, it went to B8 through D8 and such. So anything sequential, it did it automatically. And those are what's referred to as the relative references. Now in Excel, there are also absolute references and mixed references. Let's reference in here B8. So we do equal sign B8, enter, and that just says $4,000. But it's posting in here whatever is on B8. Now, that currently is a relative reference. If I go down, notice it replicates what's here on the left-hand side. It went from B8, so it started with B9 and such. If I were to change this to an absolute reference, which is by pressing the F4 key on the keyboard, notice it puts these dollar signs. It's locking it to this specific cell, to both the B column and it's locking it also on the eighth row. Now, if I have that as an absolute reference and drag this down, notice it will always give me what's on B8. Basically, it'll keep staying at 4,000. And that's because we are using absolute references. There are also what's called mixed references. So mixed references are those that have only one dollar sign. So we are locking it either by the column or we are locking it by the row. Let's say we want the dollar sign to be locked on column B. Either take away this dollar sign in front of eight, of the row eight, either by erasing it on the keyboard or by pressing the F4 key until the right mode is selected here. So we have B8 there. Hit enter. Now notice the values are going to change. That's because we are not going to column C at this point. We are just going down. So we basically it's still on column B. By the way, here's how you insert a new column. Right click, choose insert. So now let's say that I wanted to go from left to right. Notice I have it locked on column B. If I go left to right, remember it's going to keep on posting the 4,000 value. That's because we have it locked on column B. If we did not have it locked on column B, it will give us a blank cell here because there's nothing on C or D. So anytime you want to lock a reference by a specific row or column that's when you use a mixed reference anytime that you want to lock it by a specific reference point that's when you use the absolute type of reference let's do an actual example here so let's say we had a twenty thousand dollar budget for this year for our department there is going to be a decrease by 5%. We have all of these categories, and we want to first find out what the difference is for the 5% decrease, and then we want to determine what the new budget is. So in this case, put in here equal sign, and then we'll take the 4,000, which is our current budget, and multiply by 5%, then hit enter. And notice we have to give up $200. You could keep on doing this manually for the other cells in here, and it would be just fine. It would work just fine. So if we go here and then B9 times the percentage, hit enter, notice it works just fine. However, let's suppose that we have 2,000 rows here. That would take forever to do. So if we are dragging this down and using the autofill feature, now notice, first it came up with this number signs, which means just we need to widen the column here. But notice that we had computer expenses by $8,000 to start with, but now the difference is $32 million. 
And if you look at the, the formula, it's basically multiplying 4,000 by 8,000. If we look over here, it started with B8 and B6, this times that. It went to the next one, 100 times 0. So it moved one for each of them down from 5% to the next row down. Then when it got to the 32 million one, it ended up multiplying 8,000 times 4,000 because the reference kept on shifting downwards. So to lock down that reference, for this B6, the decrease, the percentage item, and that can be any number, it doesn't have to be percent, it can be number of students or number of enrolled individuals in a project or whatever. You want to make B6 an absolute reference, stay locked down to that point of reference. To do that, as I mentioned earlier, you use the F4 function key on the keyboard and that notice it puts a two dollars or you can enter those dollar signs manually by simply typing them in front of each uh, reference hit enter now notice it's still going to be a 200 dollar difference but when we drag this thing down it's going to give us the proper calculations because each one of them it's locked of course you can do additional calculations here you can say okay give me the totals okay and you can format that here on the right hand side if necessary and such of course those are things that you're going to explore on your own and, and then find the totals I press tab there after i typed sum and then hit enter notice we have to give up a thousand dollars let's say that you're the manager and and you say, what about if we decrease the budget expenditures by 6%, how much will we save? So you just type six in here, hit enter, notice you'd be saving $1,200. The idea here is, is that by using absolute references, you can use it to make projections. The new budget, you can calculate that very easily by simply equal sign the original amount minus the difference, hit enter, and those will be your new numbers.